Hi everyone in the world of cloud computing, IoT, AI and fintech, I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard and here are a few news highlights from this week in the fast moving world of cloud computing. I'd like to thank you all for all your support on social media about last week's news and please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and your colleagues. Breaking news today, directly from the world's leading cloud computing visionary and expert, David Linthicum of Cloud Technology Partners. Last week, I featured a piece on the recent acquisition of CTP by Hewlett Packard Enterprise, which has been led by CEO Meg Whitman and Anna Pinkzer, the SVP and GM of HPE Pointnext. Well, today I saw an unexpected twist that has sent social media in a spin. And further to my tweets and emails with David, I'm pleased to say that I have his official exclusive statement on what has happened and why he is no longer part of CTP and the HPE deal. David said the following in his statement that he sent to me earlier. There were three issues that arose with the HPE acquisition. First, we just could not agree upon a deal for me to remain that was not a giant step back in my career. Second, HP promotes their technology, thus not sure I could keep my independence, thus my ability to be a pundit in the cloud computing industry. And finally, did not have faith in the leadership or their ability to leverage the value of a guy like me. The red flags were numerous, thus I pulled the ejector seat and I'll let you know where I land. David went on to say, I think HP purchased a company with a lot of good people. Cloud technology partners have been a leader in the cloud through leadership space for years. I wish HPE and CTP good luck in the future. Thanks for sending over this exclusive statement today, David, and I look forward to catching up with you later on Skype. Has anyone heard of the dolphin attack? Well, you probably won't hear it because it's inaudible. But guess what? Siri, Alexa, Cortana, Google Now, Hawaii High Voice, Samsung S Voice can hear it loud and clear. Fast Company has reported this week that a research team in Zhejiang University, China, have figured out how to issue commands to the digital assistants. Inaudible ultrasonic frequencies are legitimately used by gadget makers as part, as part of a way of pairing devices. The dolphin attack takes advantage of the 20 kHz and above frequencies that humans can't hear. A voice command is recorded and then translated into an ultrasonic frequency version. Don't completely panic, as the dolphin attack is quite limited due to range. You need to be very close to a smartphone or a smartwatch for it to work. This week saw Bitcoin surge more than 33% from Friday's panic selling. This suggests that the cryptocurrency is becoming more and more immune to government intervention. Chinese regulators were shutting down all the exchanges on the mainland and the price of the most valuable cryptocurrency lost over 40% of its value. Duncan Campbell, the director of the Digital Currency Experts, which is an educational consultancy, said, there are always those waiting in the wings to buy Bitcoin whenever there is a price dip, not because they're interested in trading it, but because they feel it's seriously undervalued in the long term. There are currently 14 million Bitcoins in circulation and they're mined by computers solving complex algorithms. But as the software stands, there can only ever be 20 million in circulation. Bitcoin's decentralized network is seen as a potential solution to the inefficiencies of global banks, which print as much currency as they like, whereas Bitcoin is restrained by a 21 million cap. This week saw Oracle announce that it was joining the Cloud Native Computing Foundation, or the CNCF, as a platinum member. In doing so, it joins companies such as Amazon, Cisco, Google, IBM, Intel, Microsoft, and Red Hat as top sponsors for the Linux Foundation-based group that's now the home of Kubernetes container orchestration project and related tools. Platinum membership in the CNCF isn't cheap. It's 370,000 US dollars for the privilege, although there is a discount for existing Linux Foundation members. So with Oracle joining the foundation, it is a clear sign that the company is backing the Kubernetes ecosystem. Chief Operating Officer of the Cloud Native Computer Foundation, Chris Anazic, and forgive me if I've got that pronunciation incorrect, Chris, sincere apologies on that one, said in a statement, Oracle has decades of experience meeting the needs of world-class enterprises. We are excited to have Oracle join the CNCF as a platinum member and believe their key role will help define the future of enterprise cloud. 
This week, cyber experts warn of a Bluetooth bug called Blueborn and that it could expose billions of devices to attack. The Bluetooth vulnerability could allow hackers to spread from device to device without the owners ever knowing. Ty Miller, managing director of the international cyber security firm Threat Intelligence said, this could be one of the most dangerous security flaws that has come out to date. It's estimated to potentially affect up to 8 billion devices around the world and that's because it's got the capability to infect Windows, Linux, Android and iOS devices prior to iOS 10. Back in April, Armist Labs researchers who identified Blueborn alerted tech companies as so security patches and upgrades could be created before hackers had the chance to exploit it. It gets into devices from phones to printers, computers and smart TVs by exploiting a weakness in the Bluetooth software. Mr. Miller said, you could be simply walking down the street and you walk past someone who is vulnerable and suddenly they are infected. The virus passes undetected over Bluetooth and without permission. This week, the US Department of Defense, or the DOD, granted provisional authorization to Amazon Web Services to host level five data. AWS will be able to host the most sensitive data pertaining to the Pentagon, military, NSA and other security agencies. Amazon will be the third company to receive this authorization following Microsoft and IBM. This reinforces AWS as an industry leader in helping support the DoD's critical mission in protecting our security. Prior to this DoD contract, Amazon is the favored cloud service provider among the intelligence community and hosts classified data for 17 agencies including a 600 million contract with the CIA. No one wants to mess with Jeff Bezos. He's backed by the CIA. <laughs> this week in the crazy world of cloud saw charging by the second, the new thing. It's the biggest price change in years. Amazon Web Services will now charge by the second. Four years ago, Google changed the goalposts and outdid AWS by charging by the minute as historically AWS charged by the hour. Google and Microsoft continue to offer billing by the minute. Jeff Barr of AWS wrote in a blog post, by billing usage down to the second, we will enable customers to leverage their elasticity, save money, and customers will be positioned to take advantage of continuing advances in their computing. So in my opinion, that's another milestone and the line has been firmly drawn that the cloud computing wars continue. This week saw Sendor setting its sights on the overseas market. The Sydney-based parcel delivery startup has signed a deal with DHL e-commerce. This means the Australia Post rival will now offer door-to-door -door delivery to more than 220 countries in DHL's network. Sendor, which launched in November 2014, also signed a deal earlier in the month with eBay, enabling users to use their delivery service. Sendal is also integrated with e-commerce companies such as Nito, Zero, ShipStation, that was a close one, and Shopify, I'm sure I said ShipStation, and Shopify. Co-owner and CEO James Chin Moody said that he hopes his company's international service will be around 20 cent cheaper than existing rivals, such as Australia Post and the deal with DHL is just as big as when we first launched Sendal. From day one, our mission has been to unlock the power of big business delivery infrastructure for millions of small businesses. Our agreement with DHL e-commerce, a true leader in logistics, is a major step forward in leveling the playing field in Australia. Congratulations on your deal and the support from the DHL e-commerce network. I'm Brad Nelson of Nelson Hilliard. Thanks for watching this week's cloud computing and IoT news highlights. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment and share this video with your friends and colleagues. You can also connect with me on LinkedIn and find us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And obviously you're on YouTube right now or potentially watching a shared video somewhere on social media. But until next week, be good, be safe and keep our clouds secure. <laughs>